Dear brothers and sisters, the saints in Christ, welcome to a new episode. This is the third and the last one related to the Holy Councils. Uh, introduction. We've seen in episode number 74 how 84 laws were falsely added to the 20 laws of the Economical Council of Nicaea, the first Economical Council in the history of the Church after, like, after the, uh, the era of the Apostles. Accordingly, we could say we don't have any trust. What, what credibility would you give to uh, when they say, ah, this is a law from, uh, uh, by, uh, issued by uh, the Economical Council or any council or synod? Absolutely zero. I would say it's zero. Number two, to what extent you will have credibility in the leadership of the church when you discover that they are deceiving you, lying to you? Zero. Next point. We've seen also in the previous episode, number 75, that actually the uh, the conflict between Pope, the, the Pope and the Patriarch Theophilus, the Pope number 23 of the Alexandrian Church, with the Patriarch of uh, Constantinople, uh, John Chrysostom, who is basically is uh, a, a political issue, but you, you have to like to give it the uh, the taste or the banner or the uh, you close it with uh, a faith thing, then you have the power as a, a pope to excommunicate him. All right, uh, and in fact, he was just concerned because of the great reputation of John Chrysostom, which is till today, by the way. He is extremely highly regarded, even by the Coptic Orthodox Church. All right? So he was really concerned. He has the right to be concerned, but uh, from uh, not a Christian view, but from worldly view. So he was concerned that this small church will now be like a rival to the church, which means uh, this guy might be like my rival. Okay, so that's why he was keen to get rid of him. And we'll see today, the same thing is repeated again. All right, number three. In today's episode, we'll also uh, talk about the third economical council of Ephesus, uh, year 431, to find also that uh, Pope Cyril, who is the nephew of Pope Theophilus, the one before him, also had the same attitude and the same uh, motivation to get rid of the Pope, uh, of the Patriarch, sorry, of Constantinople, uh, Nestorius at that time. Okay? Again, concerned that Constantinople is going up and Alexandria prestige now is fading away bit by bit. So I was concerned about that. All right. In order to understand today's episode, we have to uh, talk about the creed, how it is started, and what is the introduction of the creed is. Okay. So, in the first economical council of Nicaea, year 325, uh, against uh, Arius, the heresy of Aries, they put the, uh, the creed, not as we know it today, not the, whole, the full thing, it started with, truly we believe in one God, till whose kingdom there will be no end. That's it. That was the first bit that was decided at that time. Uh, a few years, not few, many years later, just about over half a century later, uh, there was an issue uh, about the divinity of the Holy Spirit. So there was another uh, second economical council called the Constantinople One, uh, year 381, where an addition, addition or annex was uh, uh, like came out of this meeting and it was added next to the original text like it was a, the original text as we said ended as whose kingdom there will be no end then they put an addition next to it straight away truly we believe in the holy spirit 
So when the, so the second economical council just added another paragraph. Truly, we believe in the Holy Spirit until and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come or the coming age sometimes. Sometimes, Amen. So this is the creed itself. This creed is uh, considered and highly regarded by all churches, Catholic, Orthodox, and Evangelical or Protestant. Although Catholic changed one word, but this is not my issue now. All right. So now there is now come now to the third bit. Coptic Orthodox, they say that the introduction of the creed, which is separated from the main body of the creed, was determined in the economical in the third economical council of, of Ephesus, year four hundred thirty-one. Uh, this introduction starts with "We honor you, Mother of the True Light." Okay. Now, I have three questions about this before going into detail. Why this bit regarding the title of Mary or Saint Mary, the Mother of God, if it is like came up as uh, a conclusion of that Economical Council of Ephesus, why it was not added like previously in the same body, whether in the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. Why it was not added in the body? Mm -hmm. Number two. What does it mean to have an introduction for a law or the creed? Does it make sense? Number three, why we don't, this is more important, why can't you find this introduction in the other churches? It's only in the Coptic Orthodox Church. Aha, this means what? Looks like it is locally made, right? Okay, this means what? Ah, there is a trick there. There is a lie there, okay? So what is it? Let's start reading something to comment on it before we go on the history of this. What I'm concerned about this introduction thing at this stage is, listen to this. What does it say? What does it say? We honor, watch the word honor, you mother of true light, of the true light, and we glorify you. So honor you, St. Mary, and glorify you. O Holy Virgin, Mother of God, for you gave birth to the Savior of the world. He came and saved our souls. Glory, watch now the glory, to you, our Master and King Jesus Christ, etc. Now, have you noticed something? What happened to St. Mary? She got two things, honor and glory. What about Jesus? Only glory. Second thing, can you say honor and the glory of St. Mary before the glory of Jesus Christ? This means what? They put St. Mary as in the beginning. They gave her more honor than Jesus. This is what I keep saying. They consider St. Mary as she is the guardianship of the, of the God, of Jesus. As if Jesus is a God that he is under age or under the guardianship of his mom. This is heresy. This is blasphemy against Lord Jesus. Okay. Now. Many historians, and I wish also all the uh, viewers and listeners realize now, since last episode and this episode, like there is like source, a sort of conflict and scare, uh, like uh, 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 between the uh, uh, Alexandria, uh, uh, the Church of Alexandria and the Constantinople, but the Church of Alexandria is concerned about her prestige compared to Constantinople, especially since John Chrysostom, until even today, he is extremely highly regarded and like uh, uh, his sayings and explanation uh, are extremely like, uh, considered as uh, very valuable in the church. So since then, the Church of Alexandria is concerned because uh, it is supposed it is higher, but now they can see the prestige fading away with the at the same time, the prestige and the reputation and the status of Constantinople Church is going up by uh, the charismatic guys like St. John Chrysostom. Okay? To the extent even he has actually the title, uh, the title Chrysostom or Golden Mouthed, 
which the church in, in, in Alexandria, when they would like to um, uh, honor some popes like Pope Shunoda, they call him uh, uh, the the second golden now or the second Chrysostom. See, the original one is the Constantinople one, not the Alexandrian one. So actually. Uh, it shows that the Church of Alexandria, like the Pope and the Patriarch of Alexandria, was concerned that uh, he is not as bright uh, star like the uh, Patriarch of uh, Constantinople. So they were like trying, like to crush them, to get rid of them as soon as possible, and even like to excommunicate them, like to distort uh, their reputation and exile them, and like they they die in their exile. Okay, so. Now let's uh, now have some idea about uh, uh, Cyril of Alexandria and also Nestorius. Now, from the site of Saint Tecla, it says uh, the great Cyril of Patri Patriarch of uh, Alexandria, number twenty-four, was uh, born either anything between three hundred seventy-five to three eighty, and became a patriarch in uh, four hundred and twelve up to triple four. This means he was a patriarch either between 32 to 37 years of age, all right? Because he born between, could be 375, anything between 375 to 380, and became a patriarch 412. This means he was anything between 32, maximum 37 years of age. This means what? He was a very energetic young man, but not wise enough. Anyway, we'll leave this for the moment. He spent five years in the monastery, of course, by his uncle to prepare him to take the uh, the throne after him. Okay. Uh, the same uh, in the same site says once the throne of Saint Mark was empty uh, uh, by the departure of Saint uh, of uh, Amba Theophilus, Theophilus the twenty third Pope in year four one two. The whole congregation and the whole Eclerus uh, decided that uh, his nephew, that uh, uh, priest Cyril, to take over. And this happened exactly just two days after the death of, or, the, or the departure of uh, his uncle. All right, you can see who is preparing him. And by the way, as I mentioned last time, is in San Cyril. In the terminology, prepared also the way to send your scores because send your scores also is the nephew of Saint Cyril. Okay, so Saint Cyril is the uncle also of uh, Saint Dioscorus. I'm saying saints that as they call them, but uh, in fact they are criminals. Those guys, as you will see. Now we come to the. Uh, I'm still in the site of uh, Saint Tecla. Now introduction of the creed. It says, uh, as Nestorius was still insisting uh, on his opinion that uh, St. Mary should not be called Theotokos, but Christotokos, like mother of Jesus, as mentioned a few times in the Bible, uh, but not mother of God. Uh, then Cyril, the Patriarch and Pope of Alexandria called for a local synod in Alexandria. Now this actually shows us how arrogant is he, because now he is, he got this meeting or this synod in in which actually he decided the excommunication of Nestorius, while Nestorius was not attending. And he came with the conclusion or the minutes of that meeting and he sent it to his own people, like his supporters in Constantinople and Rome, and even he sent a copy of it to the uh, Emperor Theodosius, when he found that Emperor Theodosius is uh, leaning towards uh, the belief of, or the, uh, 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 the, the uh, of Nostorius. And he, he, like, he pushed him to change his mind. Those guys were, believe me, they were not afraid, they were actually, like, more influence on the whole country than the emperor himself. The emperor just uh, uh, like uh, uh, decided, okay, I, I, I follow you, all right? So he already made the decision in Alexandria, all right? Then in order like, to formulate this, he had, he had also another 
meeting where actually he added more like excommunications anyway but for time I'll, I'll leave this now then he called the emperor to call for an ecumenical council in order like to formally worldwide that this guy is excommunicated and exile him that's it and to get the uh, get the approval of the emperor as like yeah so the emperor actually uh, so they called for that meeting the meeting was done in june 431 where the whole congregation decided oh, ah yeah, yeah, yeah excommunicate nostorius and exile him and guess what where did he <laughs> exile him aha uh -huh. exile him into egypt by the way upper egypt why ah like ah get this guy like to be under my eyes all right anyway but the most important thing i did not say it now in this site so uh, so the, it says the 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 uh, the, the uh, council decided the excommunication and the exile of nostorius listen to this and put the introduction of the uh, creed which is starts with we honor you the mother of the two light so my Objective of all what I read is to confirm that in the site of St. Tecla, the introduction of the creed was decided by the Economical Council of Ephesus year 431 by 200 bishops around from another world. Okay, to confirm this, let's read from the book of St. Mary for uh, Pope Shenouda III. Also, if you go to the book of uh, uh, St. Mary by uh, Pope Shenouda I uh, would like just to confirm the following Let's read together The greatness of uh, the Virgin In his book uh, about St. Mary, page 5 The greatness of the Virgin Has been decreed in the, in the sacred Watch the word sacred uh -huh. Sacred They give you what Those ecumenical councils are infallible Led by the Holy Spirit They are sacred uh, the findings or the laws or whatever they come up with is something like an annex to the Bible, which is actually uh, not true anyway. Communical Council of Ephesus, which was assembled in uh, 431 AD, 200 bishops from the world were presented, they formulated, this is the most important thing, they formulated the prelude, prelude, like introduction, to the creed of the Christian faith. So he's assuring that the introduction of the uh, the uh, uh, the creed is formulated in this uh, uh, economical sacred council. Okay. So now let's watch. A video for uh, Amba Raphael assuring that the introduction of the creed is not formulated in the Council of Ephesus year 431. Let's watch this and come back again. <laughs> مقدمة قانون الإيمان واضح أن هي اللي هي العظيمة كأم النور الحقيقي أن هي فعلا مرتبطة بالإيمان الذي نوقش في مجمع أفسس قد يكون نتيجة الأبحاث دي في ناس لقت أن مش مش موجودة في مقررات المجمع أو في كنائس أخرى أرثوذكسية تؤمن بمجمع أفسس مش بيرددوا هذه الصلوة فيبدو أن هي أنشئت في مصر في زمن مجمع أفسس برعاية البابا كيرولوس الكبير اللي حضر مجمع أفسس وكأنها دوكسولوجية أو نشيد يستخدم في لترجية أو قبطية وإحنا حقيقة بنعتز بهذا النشيد 
واللحن الجميل بتاعنا عظيمك يا أم النور بنعتبره فعلا يعبر عن إيماننا بدوام بطولية العذراء وإن هي والدة الإله السيوطقس Did you see? Now things are available, information are available now, information is available now. So we, we found out that was not put there because we found actually uh, it is only said in the Coptic Orthodox Church. Other churches that believing in the creed, all of them, Catholic, Evangelical, Orthodox, they believe in the, the creed. They say the creed. The only church that have the introduction of the creed is only the uh, the Coptic Orthodox Church. And we found now, they try to go around the bush and say, oh, it's like a doxology or a glorification to St. Mary. And actually, yes, it is not there, but like that. Now, my question is, this means they are, they, they are lying. If the site says, of Takla and Pope Shenouda in his book, they assure that this was formulated in that council was with 200 bishops. They telling you lies. So how come that you tell me it is an infallible and it's a sacred uh, economical council led by the Holy Spirit and at the same time you lie to me? There is no credibility now in, in this stuff. All right. And if it is like actually it is a doxology or a ternima or for St. Mary, why to put it under the title of introduction of the creed and put it just before the creed? Why don't you just leave it in the, the, the in, in in the other books like you chant it in the in, in the uh, uh, the midnight praise or anything like that? Like when the tasbiha, uh, the tasbiha book, or why and why you give it the title introduction of the creed? This means you are intentionally like misleading people. And in your books, assuring it is being done and set and formulated by that meeting. Okay, so this doesn't make uh, uh, any credibility uh, to what you say, economical councils or uh, or uh, holy synods, and uh, even the credibility of the leadership of the church is is definitely zero. Okay, now. Uh, now I'm going now, we have to now to talk about the morals of St. Cyril the Great. All right. What I'm going to say is mentioned in two resources. First resource, I would say Encyclopedia Britannica. Second resource is uh, the book named The History of the Coptic Nation and its Church by Mrs. Butcher. She is an English uh, historian. And it's volume two, chapter 23, as of page 21 onwards. I will take a few stuff about the morals of Ten, Cyril the Great. Destroying, exactly like his uncle, destroying the temples of the pagans and using its stones to build the churches. The, the, the objective of this, by the way, to like to remove the whole history about uh, the uh, uh, the worship systems that were uh, existing at that time. Number two, expulsion of the Jews from Alexandria. Yes, many conflicts happened between the Jews and the Christians. And in fact, they were like bloody ones. But because he was so much powerful, he could expel all the Jews from Alexandria exactly as what ISIS did to the Christians in Iraq, in Mosul in Iraq. So he kicked them out of Alexandria and what happened? And he took all their positions, businesses, houses, everything he took. So this is the morals of Saint Cyril. Third one, he was like uh, considering himself as equal to the emperor. And he has the full word and has the upper hand. And in, yes, the emperor used to be scared of them because they can easily provoke the whole world, the whole congregation, the whole people against him. Number four, he provoked the monks against Habachia, the philosopher, mathematician, and the astronomer, as she is ruining the mind of the youth and Eventually, they attacked her, the monks, attacked her, stripped her of her clothes, killed her, skinned 
here using shells, then uh, dragging the body around Alexandria, then burning the body. All this by the monks. He did not stop them. In fact, he, he provoked them. So actually the blood of this lady is in his hands. All this, by the way, you can see it in detail in a good movie called Agora. Agora. Now I come to the last point. How about St. Cyril the Theologian? Yes, he is a Theologian. He got this gift. But in fact, yes, he was at the same time a wicked politician to get rid of his rivals using all the illegal and, and, and wicked ways to get rid of them. And in fact, all these crimes that he did, they are not mentioned in the books of the Copts, which means he did not rep like repent of them. They, if, he was re if he repented, they might say he made mistakes and they repented, but no. They don't mention it at all, which means they are there and he don't repent about them. This means what? In fact, he is not a saint. I would say he's a criminal guy because what he's done. What about the, bo the books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, and people criticize, criticizing the Bible. Some of them are very charismatic. They can, like, they have this, like, uh, charisma or this skill, like, to uh, collect and, uh, and uh, match and compare information, all that stuff, which is good. But at the same time, they, this is not the morals of Christianity at all to do this. But he did it. All right. So I would say, no, he's not, he's not a Christian in the, from the very first place. Yeah, yes, he was baptized, he was a pope, all this stuff. But what he did is not biblical at all. Where uh, Has any of the apostles did this? When St. Paul, when he was like uh, preaching, and he, for example, he, he went to Athens, and in the Bible it says even he, he, he was like his soul or his spirit was provoked when he saw that the, the city is full of, uh, idols. What did he do? Did he did he like uh, destroy them or anything like that? No, 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 no. Even when he began to speak to people, he noticed that there is a god that has no name and it says like unknown god. Then he said, "Guys, I saw you when I was going around the city that you are very religious people, but I saw also that you are worshiping a god that is unknown god." By the way. I will preach you and speak to you about this unknown God. See, the Christian person with, who is really led by the Holy Spirit, how he invested this situation to introduce Jesus to people. But this guy is just, just destroying and forcing them and killing and all that stuff. This is not Christianity at all. Uh, now, out of those last three episodes, I will just come to the conclusion. I hope that you come to the same conclusion. That when they say it's economical council and you have to consider this and that and all, and all that stuff, it is it is not really uh, uh, anything but it is just like a, a scare crow that the, the the scare people using it's holy sacred economical council led by the Holy Spirit. No, absolutely, it is a council of demons, not of saints. And whatever they come up with. There is no credibility whether it is actually a conclusion of this or not. And what, where the, what the motivation was? Just political motivation, hatred motivation, and just put the banner of a faith thing in order to get rid of, and lobbying, and get rid of your rival in a very wicked way. God willing, if it doesn't come, we'll meet again in another episode, another series, uh, uh, like to expose what's going, on, what's going on there. God bless you all.